physical proof of extinct animals mating is understandably hard to come by. For the most part, scientists have to infer the presence of copulatory organs based on what the extinct animal is most closely related to. Sometimes this isn't much of a leap at all because the extinct animal still has direct living relatives that have retained largely the same anatomy. Other times, you are talking about the non-avian dinosaurs. Despite the rarity of fossil coitus, some have been found and almost all instances are of invertebrates caught in the act for all time. Let's take a look at a recent example that happens to be the oldest yet known. Despite the informal term, bug, applied to pretty much every single creepy crawly, there is only one order that are true bugs, the Hemiptera. They are likely to be considered true bugs because some of them are human pests and therefore may have been some of the first creepy crawlies to be called bugs. Then the term bug got applied to all sorts of unrelated animals, including even some crustaceans. Then the science of taxonomy came around and Carl Linnaeus decided to just name the Hemiptera or Heteroptera the true bugs. These true bugs include the cicadas, aphids, plant hoppers, leaf hoppers, assassin bugs, bed bugs, and shield bugs. These critters go all the way back to the Carboniferous period, but their fossil record is not as good as animals with hard internal skeletons. So every new fossil is a boon to the understanding of how these things evolved and lived. The frog hoppers, or Cercopoidea, for example, seem to appear in the early Jurassic. The frog hoppers are cicada-like bugs with a round, blunt head and wings that cover much of their bodies when folded. They have a pair of short but incredibly powerful hind legs that they use to hop, hence the name. Their babies are soft and squishy, so to protect themselves from drying out and being eaten by predators, they create a blanket of foam produced by frothing up the watery part of the sap they suck for nutrients by pushing it through the breathy holes along their sides. This is why they are also often called spittle bugs. Some of the oldest frog hoppers are in the extinct group Procercopidae, known from the early Jurassic to late Cretaceous of Eurasia. They come from amber fossils, as well as compression fossils, which are basically flattened fossils that have been put under lots of pressure. Many of these fossils are reduced to carbon films, though not always, and near three-dimensional bones can be found in these sorts of fossils. An incredibly unique specimen of a frog hopper was described in 2013 from a very productive fossil bed near Dahogao village in Shantau Township, Nishang County, Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, Northeastern China, by a team of Chinese researchers in Plus One. The researchers had been looking through over 1,200 specimens of fossil insects coming out of this locality when they came across a series of fossils that looked like they could belong to a new species of a genus of frog hopper that had been known since 1983, Anthoscatina. One of the specimens of this new species remarkably preserved a male and female pair still stuck together. They died while mating. The male was made the holotype and female the allotype of a new species they named Anthoscatina perpetua. The species name means eternal love. Ain't that nice? Bugs fossilized in the act of mating is not something that has never been found before, though it is still considered quite rare. There are over 30 examples of fossil paired insects, with the majority of those being lodged in amber because of course that would be the easiest way for such an instance to be captured for all time. The discovery of the mating Anthoscatina perpetua is technically the oldest example of this ever found. No other mating insects are older. The fossil proves that these insects originally mated belly to belly, with the male inserting himself into the female. However, many modern frog hoppers mate with the male on top and or slightly to the side. It also proves the bugs have always had symmetrical genitalia. Aside from that though, it's just a cool specimen of something intimate you wouldn't normally expect to find in the fossil record. Oh, also this video is inspired by an entry in Dr. Dean Lomax's book Locked in Time. Check it out when you get a chance. 
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.